Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, I just wanted to log on, kind of give an update on what's going on. Um, uh, my life lately. Um, obviously, if you watched the last few videos, um, I have been dealing with some health issues with my father. Um, I would say in February of February of 17 or 18 February of 2018 my father was diagnosed with ALS um, and I didn't know this at the time of the diagnosis but apparently there's two versions or two two kinds of ALS there's an aggressive kind and there is a not so aggressive kind well, apparently my father had the more aggressive number two kind. Um, and uh, it seemed like every week the, the deterioration from the disease every week. Like one week he would deteriorate a certain amount. And then that next week... He would deteriorate twice that. Um, it progressed extremely fast. Um, well, October 7th, 2018, my father passed away of ALS. Um, and it's been hard. Um, it's been hard on my mom. My mother has been married to him for 40 years, and she has very much struggled to be in that house. Um, about a week ago, I found out that since the day of his funeral, she has not been in the living room. She won't go in the living room because that is where his chair is, where he sat every day when he wasn't working. Um, uh, that was his comfortable spot in the house. That's where he, you know, he liked to be because he could sit in his chair. He could see out the front window. Um, he could see anybody coming up the driveway. He had a direct shot to the front door of the house, so he could see anybody coming in the house. But anyways, he felt like he could... He was kind of in the center of everything right there and could watch everything from that one spot. So, later in the progression of his disease, we actually moved his hospital bed to that same spot. We moved his chair, brought his hospital bed in, and had his hospital bed right there in that spot of the living room. So now that spot in the living room, my mom obviously associates with not only where he was always, but where he died. Um, after he passed away, we moved, we disassembled the bed um, had that return to the ALS Society, which huge shout out, shout out to the ALS Society of Minnesota. They really, really stepped up. And I can't say enough about this process will never be easy. Anybody that ever goes through a family member having ALS will never be easy. But the ALS Society made it about as easy as a situation like that could be. I also want to throw a shout out to Alina Hospitals and Clinics. The nursing staff there were amazing. Um, they were amazing as how they took care of my father. They really, they took care of him as he was their father. 
Um, but anyways, back on topic. Um, my, my mom is starting to do a little bit better now at this point. She still, you know, she still has her moments and she won't admit it to me, but I also know that she is also working basically from sun up to sundown so that she don't have to be in the house. And I don't know what to do to fight that. I don't know what to do to get her to Sorry. I'm tired. Um, I don't know what to do to get her past that. And I'm pretty sure there's not much I can do. I just have to let her... I just have to let time... I just have to let time deal with it. Um, anyways. I'm doing better. Obviously, I have my moments. Um... I'm not used to my dad not being around. You know, he was kind of my... He was kind of my go-to person. He was kind of... He was my hero. I, he, he taught me how to do most things that I know. He taught me how to work on cars. He taught me how to bull hunt. He taught me how to shoot bull. He taught me how to bird hunt. He taught me how to deer hunt. You know, um, the things a father do does um and and he was my best friend you know a lot of guys go out and hang out with their buddies on their days off if I was off and my father was off I hung out with my father um me and him hung out and you know we went to motocross races we went to car shows and stuff like that we were together a lot so it's hard not having him around and I, I have I've also found myself a few times something happening. Um, for example, me and my dad for 10, 10 years have been saying Jeep needs to come out with a Jeep pickup truck again with a diesel engine for an option. Well, a month ago, Jeep announced that they were going to do that. They were coming out with a pickup truck. And the following year from its re release, there was going to be a diesel option. When I saw that and read that, I thought in my head right away, I thought, oh man, I should call my dad and tell him that. And it was a serious slap in the face when I realized, oh, my dad's not there to tell him no more. Um, so I have my moments. Um, for the most part, I'm okay. Um, but I have my moments. Uh, you know, on to another topic. I, in one of my last videos, I showed that I had got a Glock 42. Um, I have now, even though it's winter and I normally I would be carrying my Glock 19 because I'm of coats and hoodies and, you know, easier to cover up. But because the Glock 42 is new, um, I have been carrying it. So... In the next few weeks, next few week or so, I think, I'm going to try and get a video uploaded and kind of do a review. I've got about 600 rounds through it now. Um, I've carried it for a little while now. And uh, i got to say, uh, it's not a bad gun. It's a very, very, very comfortable gun. Um, I've kind of been... <laughs> I guess spoiled you know I carried the Glock 19 which the Glock 19 even the way I have it set up with my TLR1 HL um, on it it is a very car carryable gun um, it's very I've had no issues concealing it um, it's been a very very it's a very easy gun to carry can you feel it on your person when you're carrying it in your pant in your waistband? Sure, but it's not. But it's not uncomfortable. And I'm a bigger guy, you know. I got a 
I got a gut. I like my beers. I like my steak, and you know, but I've never really had a problem carrying it. However, I will say, now that I have started to carry, I just had a bus, school bus, loaded with kids, pulled right out in front of me. What an idiot. Anyways, carrying the Glock 42 as I have done as of late, I have kind of found myself spoiled. Um, I went to go to the mall the other day. And as I left the house, I grabbed the Glock 19. I thought, you know, I'm going to carry my Glock 19. Threw it on. Walked out the door. Jumped in the car. Started going to the mall. As I get to the mall, I realize, wow, I can really feel this on my hip. Um, because it is so much bigger. So I have found myself a little spoiled with how comfortable the Glock 42 is to carry. Um, my fiance, she loves it. Um, I have let her shoot it. Um, I have, uh, she is, when I am carrying my Glock 19, usually will throw that in her purse. Um, she does also have a carry permit. Um, she normally carries in her firearm is a Taurus PT 709 it's a single stack 9mm decent gun um, not the most comfortable in hand um, the grip's a little short obviously there's not a lot of extras you can buy for that firearm as far as extended grip and stuff like that so it is in the trigger guard um, it's very square um, even more Glock even more, you know, the Glock trigger guards have never been known to be very comfortable. And so in that case, people undercut them and all that to make them more comfortable to carry. So you don't end up getting Glock knuckle. The trigger guard on that Glock, or on the Taurus, I'm sorry, on the Taurus PT709 is even more uncomfortable than the Glock, which... It's kind of surprising, but it is the case, and it is true. Um, but anyways, as far as the Glock 42, um, the next week or so here, I will be doing a full review of that firearm. Um, I will also do a review of the holster. Um, I've been carrying it in a, uh, on your 6 holster that I had custom made. Because I have a TLR6 tactical light on my Glock 42. Um, and even with the light on it, it's still extremely light. Extremely light gun. So, anyways, look forward to that. I look forward to putting that out. Um, I'll put that review out. And, uh, yeah, so... I don't know. I was just wanted to give a little quick update. I'm driving home. My, uh, I just found out my son missed the bus this morning, which he's never actually done. I think it's the first time he's ever missed the bus. This morning has been pretty bad, though. Uh, the roads are terrible. The, uh, we went from sub-zero temperatures, minus 50 degrees, um, mid-last week, to Sunday, yesterday, here it was uh, almost 45 degrees um, so there was a lot of melting going on a lot of moisture well then on top of everything else last night it rained so this morning it, when I got up it dropped down to 25 24 degrees so the roads are literally sheer ice they are clearing up now but they're sheer ice anyway so my kid missed the bus so now I've got to go home get him and take him to school because he is not getting another day off he had four days off last week they were because of the cold they were out monday tuesday wednesday and thursday so his ass is going to school anyways i'll see you guys soon thanks for watching thanks for tuning in um like subscribe and turn on that notification bell 
if you like my videos, turn on that notification bell so when I do upload you will be uh, notified, hopefully. Um, I know YouTube is not the greatest about notifying people, but if it's on you got a better chance of getting notified than if it's not. Anyways, I hope you have a good, uh, good Monday and uh, stay golden. See you next time.